Grace to you, from God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, or rather, today we celebrate All Saints Day. Friday was the actual day. But on this day, we hear our Lord Jesus Christ teach us what true blessedness is. And true blessedness, according to Christ, is very different from the blessedness that the world seeks. The world in which we live says, blessed are the rich in spirit. To be rich in spirit means to imagine that either one doesn't need God, uh, or that God doesn't care how one lives, or that no matter how one lives, God surely approves of the decisions and lifestyle. The rich in spirit. They give no thought to their sins. They are confident that the kingdom of heaven is theirs because... Well, God owes it to them. The kingdom of heaven, though, is different. True blessedness is the opposite. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit means to be humble before God, to be penitent, to be contrite over sins. To be poor in spirit is to understand that because of our sins, God doesn't owe us anything except temporal and eternal punishment. The poor in spirit, Jesus says, they are the ones that are truly blessed. Theirs, he says, is the kingdom of heaven. For God only gives his kingdom to those who confess their sins, their spiritual poverty, their spiritual lack, and then come to God empty-handed for the forgiveness of every sin and every spiritual blessing as gift. And in that spiritual poverty, they receive from him the kingdom which is righteousness, which is peace, which is joy in the Holy Spirit. The world says, blessed are those who are comfortable in this life, who love their lives in this world. To be comfortable in the world is to be friends with the world and its ways. It's to conform one's thinking to the way that the world thinks about things so that one praises what the world praises and pursues what the world prioritizes. And so now, the world is, says you are blessed if you go along with things like the homosexual and transgender movements, because then, blessed are you because they will leave you alone. The world says, blessed are you if you embrace evolution, because you'll be with the majority, and no one will think that you're an unintelligent rube. The world promises to bless you with comfort if you just believe all the things that it believes. The true blessedness is different. Blessed are those who mourn, Jesus says. This means to mourn over the state of the world, to mourn over the state of our country and our society. It is to be oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. It is to be tormented by the depravity which we see in our world each day on television, the internet, and in our workplaces. To mourn these things is to be truly blessed. Because those who mourn, Jesus says, shall be comforted. Not with the world's comfort, nor with the non-existent promise of better days to come, but they will be comforted with the fact that Christ will return to judge the world in righteousness, that he will, as we were talking about at the end of Bible study today, return on a day to judge the wicked and also to reward the faithful. The world says, Blessed are the ones who trust in themselves, the ones who trust in their own abilities, their own strength, and their own ingenuity. But Jesus says, blessed are the meek. He's actually quoting from Psalm 37 when he says this, when he, and he describes the meek specifically as those who wait on the Lord. The psalmist in that psalm, uh, he, he complains that the wicked prosper. Again, something that we're acquainted with. The wicked prosper, the evil oppress others. And as we mourn over this, the psalmist writes, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. 
And so Christ tells us, if we do not have an office whose duty it is to right the world's wrongs, then wait upon the Lord, for he will in his good time and in his wisdom bring justice in a way that will be far better and far more comprehensive than ours. The world says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for wealth and luxury for power and popularity. The world promises these things to those who relentlessly pursue them and for those who sacrifice everything to achieve them. Jesus, though, says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And he promises that they shall be filled. To hunger and thirst for righteousness is twofold. First, it's to crave Christ's righteousness that God gives to us by faith each day. Faith in the gospel, by which he forgives our sins and clothes us with Christ's perfect righteousness. But it's also the righteousness of our lives. True blessedness is the desire to live righteously, to act justly, to live according to God's commandments. Not just outwardly, but inwardly in the heart. Righteous living comes only from being justified, from being declared righteous by faith in Christ. And so the one who hungers and thirsts after these things finds themselves filled, righteous in God's sight, and then living holy lives, pursuing holiness in their lives each day. The one who hungers and thirsts for wealth and luxury, power and popularity, you know, are never filled. They never receive that which they seek, and if they do, well, it's never enough. But the one who hungers and thirsts for righteousness will receive that. And not only will they receive it, but they will be filled. They will be satisfied with the righteousness that God gives them. The world says, blessed are the unmerciful. Blessed are the ones who hold a grudge and keep watch over the those who have wronged them. But Jesus says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. For having received mercy from God, we that are merciful to those who sin against us, willing and waiting for them to repent so that we may forgive them. And along with this, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. For having been reconciled to God by faith in his Son, we then seek to live in peace with others as a, in as much as it is dependent upon us. The world says, blessed are those who follow the desires of their hearts, whatever their desires may be. But Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And like hungering and thirsting for righteousness, this is first the purity that God gives us by faith in Christ, that we receive in the forgiveness of sins. And then it is the purity which we pursue each day, fighting sin in our hearts, putting it away at every turn, so that it does not lead us into the defilement of sin and further impurity. The result of living this life of faith the result of being poor in spirit, mourning over the world's wickedness, meekly waiting for the Lord's deliverance, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, being merciful and peaceable. This is the life of the saints. And for that life, it earns the saints persecution in this life. Just as the world hated our Lord Jesus Christ when he walked the earth, so it hates all who follow Christ, all who forsake the counterfeit blessedness of this world and pursue instead the true blessedness of Christ. And St. Paul says very bluntly in 2 Timothy 3.12, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. But even in this, whether the world mocks you, murders you, or something in between. Christ declares you blessed. Blessed are those who, per, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the life of the saints on earth. There is trial and hardship. There is persecution and there is cross. This is the life of the saints in this world because they look for a better blessedness than the one the world offers. A blessedness which all the saints experience in this life by faith and in spite of their poverty in spirit, their grief, their patience, and all the other fruits of faith that Jesus tells us and teaches us in the Beatitudes. In the midst of hardship and grief, cross and persecution, Jesus reminds us that we are blessed because the kingdom is ours. And although we don't look very blessed in the eyes of the world, and frankly, although we don't seem to ourselves to be all that blessed at times, we know that this is not the case. For not only do we know that we possess true blessedness, the kingdom of heaven, now by faith, but we know that one day we will possess it by sight. Even as now as the saints who have gone before us and lived in the church triumphant currently enjoy it. Christ shows St. John a picture of this sweet and blessed country in today's epistle lesson. John sees the elect, the 144,000, a number that signifies the number of all the elect known to God, but to our eyes a great multitude, which no one could number. And he sees them there dressed in robes of white, made white not by their own efforts, but by the blood of the Lamb. Ro robes white signifying Christ's righteousness and the perfect joy of heavenly bliss. John sees them with palm branches in their hands, the ancient symbol of victory, for the victory that the Lamb has over sin, death, and the power of the devil, he has given to those saints while they lived by faith, and now they enjoy it by sight. For now they are at perfect peace, far from sin and death and the devil's powers. Now, they suffer no poverty. Now they suffer no lack and no grief harms them because the Lamb is in their midst and he leads them to fountains of living water. This is the blessedness of the saints, which those who have gone before us now enjoy. And this comforts us whenever we think about our loved ones who have died in the faith. For they are most certainly among that number. Not only do we comfort ourselves when we think of our beloved, but we comfort ourselves with the fact that this is the blessedness of the saints, which we now possess by faith, but which we look forward to possessing ourselves when Christ calls us from this veil of tears. For the blessedness John sees, which the saints in triumph enjoy now, we now then will enjoy one day. For this he promises to us when he says rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.